Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon for for your side. Um, thank you for giving us your time to listen to me talk about um, the University of, of Limerick. I am Roisin Hayes and I'm the recruitment manager for Southeast Asia. Um, I also have Japan, Taiwan and South Korea within my portfolio as well. So I'll start with the presentation. Um, yep, so I've graduated from the Kemi Business School um, in UL, which is a triple accredited uh, business school. And I was formerly a diplomat with the, um, the UK Foreign Office for 25 years before I came to work in, uh, in UL. So I've got quite a bit of experience with um, Southeast Asia. That was my uh, portfolio with the Foreign Office as well. I'm a big fan. So just as an introduction to Ireland, it's the only speaking country in the EU since the UK left the EU. Um, it's the fastest growing economy for the, for the last five years in Europe. Center of Excellence for Tech, Pharma, Medical, and lots of other industries. And um, particularly in Limerick, we've got a lot of big pharmaceutical companies here. And then by comparison to other countries um, that you, you may be more familiar with, the UK, Australia, Canada, um, we're definitely much lower in our fees and cost of living. So just for the university, that's an aerial view of our campus. You can see it's very green. We make no secret of the fact that it likes to rain in Ireland and uh, therefore we end up with a very green, lush, um, fields and trees, lots of greenery. So it's a public university uh, ranked in the top 100 young universities in the world. We just turned 51 last year. And we're also renowned for our first in the world for student ex international student experience. Ranked in the top 200 universities in the world for career preparation and graduate employability. Within six months of our students graduating, 96% of them are either going on to further education or are in full-time employment. So just in terms of where we are, where we are, you'll be familiar with the, the UK on this map. And for Ireland, we're over here on the west coast, right over here um, on the Wild Atlantic Way. We're the third largest city in Ireland, population of um, in excess of 18,000, actually. Um, and around 20 percent of that is, inter is made up of our international student body. Half an hour from Shannon International Airport. And just a one hour flight to London. So you can see our beautiful campus there. Um, 10 minutes from city centre, four and a half kilometres uh, to be exact. So you can cycle, drive, you can get a bus. Um, and if you're very adventurous, you can walk. We have, it's an award-winning campus, um, voted the best student campus in Ireland for the last number of years. Um, everything is housed on the campus. You know, if you look around here, these are all different student uh, accommodations. And it's, 
366 acres in total, so a very large campus. Limerick's quite a young city. 33% of the population is under, is in and around the age of 24 years old. So clubs and societies, um, I think this is why we're so highly ranked in terms of stu international student experience. Um, during, when they arrive on campus um, in September, we really put a lot of a lot of thought and effort into the first seven weeks that our students are with us. We really encourage them to get involved in clubs and societies to meet to meet friends um, and just to to help them settle in more. So for our student accommodation, this is just a glimpse of what they might be like. You can request single occupancy <clears throat> or you can share with a group of friends. Um, we like to try and give priority to international students coming to stay. We understand that they want a sort of safe environment. Um, and when you're moving uh, to a country with such a different culture, it's really important that you feel welcomed and safe on campus. So we try to give our international students priority, but it is so important that as soon as they have their letter of offer and they think they're going to come, straight away they should put in their applications for com campus accommodation because um, everybody's aware that there is an accommodation crisis in Ireland, particularly in Dublin, it's very bad. Um, but also, you know, things are tight in Limerick and Cork as well. So we really do encourage our students to apply as soon as possible for accommodation. The prices are um, from six to eight uh, per academic year. Um, and of course, that, that depends on whether you go for single occupancy or, um, or a, a shared, uh, a shared uh, accommodation with maybe three, four, uh, other people. Um, also, women can request female-only accommodation. Um, so there are lo lots of lots of different variations. So, like most universities, we have our four main faculties. Certainly, our our most um, popular would be our business chemistry school. Uh, as I said earlier, triple accredited business school um, and our engineering um, students can come in on what's known as common entry level. So they study a sort of a common engineering first year and that sort of informs their decision as to whether they would like to go on and do chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, the, all, all the different engineerings. But it's quite useful to help the student decide what they definitely want to do in their second year. We also have a common entry offer for um, computer science where they can branch off into AI or cybersecurity, whatever, whatever suits them. So the structure of the four year bachelor degree, all of our degrees are four years. And that's because we, or the, uh, that's just another mention of the common entry where you get an overview, as I said before, of the, um, an, an overview of all of the subjects, and then you decide what you want to major in your second year. Um, so our unique selling point for the University of Limerick is definitely our paid internship. Um, it's known as the known as the cooperative education placement. Um, salary is probably a bit higher than that now, uh, depending on the field that you go into, but they're all paid and it's a mandatory part of the degree programme. UL will 
help the student to, to find their placement. They'll help them with their CV. They will circulate their CVs for them with everybody that's on our database and hopefully help them to find a placement or else the student can opt to find their own placement if they have something in mind. And then the year four is a research project. After the undergrad bachelor's degree, um, students can have a one year automatic stay back visa to work if they wish. And these are typical fees, annual fees. For our postgrad, if a student has done their undergrad with the University of Limerick and decide to go on and do a postgrad masters, um, they will only pay EU fees for that. These are one year programs. Two taught semesters and then typically um, some kind of project work during the summer. After their master's, we have the two year stay back visa for those students who wish to work in Ireland after that. All of our courses have an into a uh, September intake. We have two, um, maybe health sciences and sports fitness. Um, they're the only two courses that start in January. And these are our typical fees. Fees would vary depending on the program that the student decides to do. If there's if they're doing a, a course where there will be a lot of field study work involved, there might be an, an extra um the fee might be slightly higher for the student. This is a few of our close contacts that we work with in Ireland, um, in Limerick and around Ireland. Um, so we work with them for the internship programme that we have for undergrad students. And because of that, then we have really close links um, with students who want to go on to find permanent employment after they graduate. So our employability rates are extremely high. So the Irish economy was least impacted globally by um, COVID. Um, really good post-study work opportunities, as I, I've spoken about. Oh, the two years automatic stay back visa. Part-time work is allowed during term time up to 20 hours per week. Um, outside term time, you can work up to 40 hours a week. So sort of Christmas and during the summer. And then after, after that two-year visa expires, you can apply to stay longer if you have an agreement with your place of work. <clears throat> this is for students who don't immediately want to return to their, to their own country. So we'll be encouraging students to apply through yourselves. These are the documents that are required for application. And you would do that directly through the website, the university website. the, the um, requirements. English language requirements as always, 6.5. And for Duolingo, which we actually say to students is quicker, easier and cheaper. Um, is accepted as well, 120 or above. 
And then this is just one of our past students who did um, really well and con continued on to work with, uh, with Facebook um, after doing her <clears throat> internship through the University of Limerick with Facebook. So um, Ireland is uh, voted, I think it's number three on the Global Peace Index um, for the last number of years. It's very safe. Um, it's fun. Um, you'll get a lot of um, practical education through the internship program, good employment opportunities and yeah, we we just love to to welcome students here. Anybody got any questions that I could help with? Okay, oh, thank you, Rosie. Uh, we have one question at the moment. Um, this one, I wonder how many hours students are required to study in a week in relation to the information that if a student wants to study in more than twenty hours per week, they can apply for work visa. Um, or they can continue the studies after the work visa? Um, if a student wants to study for, for 20 hours a week or work? Yeah. Uh, I, th I think the question your, is about working. Yeah. Uh, in your presentation previously, uh, you mentioned about uh, the maximum the students can uh, working is for 20 hours. And then mm -hmm. if uh, it's more than 20 hours, they want to work for more than 20 hours, they need to apply for the working visa. Is it uh, during their uh, um, study visa or different visa? So students would come to Ireland under the study visa. And within that visa, you're only allowed to work up to 20 hours a week during term time. So you wouldn't be allowed to um, to work any more than 20 hours per week. But between May and September, you're allowed to work up to 40 hours per week. If you're not, if it's you're not in like university. Is it like the UK? Yeah. Uh, oh. Is it similar with it? <laughs> Oh, okay, and then and then during uh, you know during Christmas as well, like so major major holidays you can work, um, up to forty hours per week. Then you get your stay back visa after the undergrad degree. You get a stay back visa of one year, and then after your masters, you get a stay back visa of two years. If you want to stay longer, then you will change to a working visa. If you want okay. to stay longer and work work permanently, then you would change to a working visa. Okay, thank you, Rosin. Uh, next question. For the internship, uh, is it guaranteed uh, and is it meant for every UG student regardless of the major? Is it relevant to their major? Yeah, is, is, is that it what you... uh, guaranteed is for it... the internship? Yeah. Yeah, so um, I as I said, it's mandatory. Um, it's a mandatory part of the degree. What happens is we would assist all students to make up a very good CV in that that's very relevant to their major. We would circulate their CVs to the companies who are relevant to their major. Hopefully they would be called for interview. Quite a few people get called for maybe three or four interviews and then um, offered a job. It's quite unusual that a student wouldn't get a job. And but we have we have uh, things in place for if a student does not get a job, they would set extra modules as an alternative to that to pass that part of their their course. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, next question. Earlier presentation stated English proficiency requirement of 6.5 is for master. Is it the same for the undergraduate? Yes, it is. 6.5 
is our requirement for all programmes in the University of Limerick, apart from the foundation course. If they're coming in to do a foundation course, it's 5.5. Sorry, 5.0. 5.0 for the foundation and the, so for and the, the fund, for the for the un for the university of limerick foundation the english requirement is five and for any other program in the university it's 6.5 okay and uh for the duolingo uh you mentioned about 120 is it for mm -hmm. all uh ug and pg Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, if if a student if a student has studied through English, they they could well be eligible for an exemption. Um, if if a student has studied through English, so we would look at that on a case by case basis. Okay, is it like for international schools only or national plus? Uh, as long as they use. English uh, as the uh, main language, is it can be assessed for the case by case? Yes, if, if they've okay. studied through English, yes. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. Uh, do the students have to get a job first before applying the working visa or they can just apply directly after the graduation? Uh, this question refers to the PG students. Um, depending on whether you've graduated from an undergrad an undergrad program, you've got one year to find employment. And then um, you would, once you're in employment, you would then apply to change your work, your visa. You've got one year to do that. After your master's, you've got two years to find employment and then to change, uh, you change to your visa once you've got employment. Okay. The next question is regarding the cohort. Uh, how many Indonesian students do you have currently? Uh, and I'm also wondering, uh, across Southeast Asia, which country has the like most popular cohort in uh, your university? So did, did you ask about Indonesian students? Yeah, Indonesian students. Yeah. This agent asked so about Indonesian students. So we we currently have about 14 Indonesian students doing PhDs who have come in on the BPI scholarship. Yeah. yeah BPI. So we have yeah. that. And then um and our numbers are growing for undergrad actually. Um they're getting, you know, our numbers are getting higher because we have dropped the requirement for a foundation for Indonesia. So Indonesian students can come straight from school um, to the University of Limerick. Now, for other parts of Southeast Asia, that's not the case, unfortunately. Um, you know, for Vietnam, Philippines, uh, uh, Thailand, Thailand. Uh, they all still require a visa, but for Indonesia, a couple of months ago, um, we took away the require requirement for a foundation, which, uh, which I think is going to help with our numbers to grow. Um, what else did you ask me? Oh yes, our our biggest population of Southeast Asia, um, students is probably Malaysian. Malaysian. But um, if you're looking at other parts of Asia, um, we have a lot of Chinese and a lot of Indian. Okay, noted for that. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, for PhD applications, I wonder if we can assist uh, for PhD um, application or they just make the direct application to your university? Because some of the universities have like different um, policies for that for PhD students? I believe you have to secure your sco your scholarship first. Yeah. And then um, we will, and then when you get in contact with, you can get in contact with me um, or one of, you know, and I would put you in touch with the correct 
faculty that you're interested in. Certainly our most um, popular faculty is um, uh, our arts and health sciences because we have a structured PhD in place for, for that faculty. Um, so that, that's a very popular option for our PhD students. And in fact, I would say um, most of them are in that faculty. So if you had interest from your students for a PhD, certainly just send their names through to me and I would put them in touch with the, with the assistant dean from that faculty. Actually, she, when I come to meet you um, in October, if I come to your office to meet your team, um, the assistant dean will be travelling with me. She's the one that runs the structured PhD for Indonesian students. And um, you might get a chance to talk to her when we're over in Indonesia in October. Oh, thanks, Joe. Looking forward to for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Next questions. Uh, for students doing the bachelor degree, can you accept their entry for the SMA three, or they have to go through foundation? This is actually uh the most uh inquiries that I got recently. Uh, is it accepting a national curriculum for their entry or not? It, what what country is this? Indonesia. Uh yeah. Uh SMA is yes. for Indonesia. So there's no, there is no requirement for a foundation for bachelor's degree for Indonesian students. Okay, uh, for the foundation, I wonder, uh, like the minimum score for them uh, to get into the foundation or um, like for the international students uh, to get into the direct entry for bachelor degree. How about the score they uh, need to get? Well, you see, Jazzy, it it um differs from different countries depending on what the what um their uh qualifications are from their high school. So I would need to. I mean, I I could quite easily put an email together and cover all of the different countries in South Asia, if you thought that would help, and then maybe you can share that with the wider team. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, yeah, I'm happy, happy to do work. that. I'm happy to do that after um after this meeting. I can send that through to you. Yeah, okay. Uh, following up question, uh, Raisin, uh, how about when the students are just to get the diploma done in their country? Uh, like in Indonesia, they will study diploma first for the one or two years and then transfer to Limerick. Is it possible for that? Yes, it is. Um, so we would have a lot of pathway programs. Um, do, do you mean you do your first two years bachelor degree in Indonesia and then transfer yeah. to Limerick? Yes, we can do that. Although it does create a slight problem um, in terms of the internship because a student would find it very difficult to come in to start a third year in Limerick and then go straight into an internship program. So there would be issues around the internship. So we'd, we'd nearly say that it's better to come for the four years so that you have your first two years in Limerick and then you do your internship program. Okay, not yet. All right, next question. Um, based on what I heard, if the student who want to apply for different programs, they also have to submit the reason such as personal statement in terms of applying visa. Is it the same as a personal statement when they apply to the university? Or do they have to make another one for the visa application? No, it depends. Um, it depends on the program. Oh no, um, no, no. But I mean, sometimes it depends on the program that you're applying for. Sometimes they might like a personal statement, or you know, so that they can see a bit of your um or, or a portfolio, some of your portfolio work, depending on the program that you're you're 
applying for, but no, there wouldn't be um, a personal statement for an application, not really. Okay, thank you. Next question, should it visa has to be applied before entry to the country. Oh, this one is obviously yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, then it's yes. applied for the visa application uh, before entering the island. I mean, for Malaysians, no. Uh, Malaysians oh, no. do not. Malaysians it's don't like... need a visa. Hmm? Okay. Uh, which countries are uh, raising uh, for the Southeast Asia? Uh, that the students uh, don't need to apply for the visa? Malaysia. Only Malaysia? Oh, Malaysia and, well, South Korea, I cover as well. They don't need a visa either, but Malaysia is the, is the one. Okay. Uh, oh, Singapore, after... sorry. Singapore, Singapore also. Singaporean also. So after they receive the unconditional offer, uh, they can just uh, receive the document uh, to enter the island just like that yes correct that's correct yes mm -hmm. okay cool hopefully indonesia will <laughs> get it done <laughs> okay yeah can indonesian students with the national curriculum enter directly for the first year or oh, this one is uh we already answered this i need to go with foundation uh for malaysian entry to undergraduate degree with gce a level Yes, yes, G GCSEs and the A levels. Yes, they're uh, well, they're they're UK requirements. They're per they're fine, and you'd go straight into um bachelor degree. Yes. Okay. Next one is for Philippines. Can students direct and uh, enter direct into bachelor program, and do they uh, need to go through foundation? For Philippines Philippine students, yes, do need to do foundation. For foundation. Yes. yes. Okay. Next one is what's the most popular major that Limerick is strong at? I think one of them is music, uh Racine. Music? Yeah. Really? Um, I mean, no, we we have a we ha uh we have a very famous um Irish World Academy in the university. And we know that a lot of Asian students do like that, like going for, for those programs. But, you know, AI, cybersecurity, computer science, um, international business is massively popular. Um, yeah, so those, but, but a lot of the engineering and computer science, very, very popular. Okay. Yeah. And languages, okay. actually, we've, we've got, you know, we've got a really good um, language centre. So a lot of students come, you know, to to do their English study through us first before they apply for their bachelors. OK, um, this one come from Myanmar. Uh, Myanmar students need to attend the foundation programme if they join the UG programme. Yes, and we've we've had uh, more and more Myanmar students coming to uh, uh, you know inquiring. Um, actually, hopefully, I'll visit Myanmar in um, uh, in October if we have any students from Myanmar that you know that you want to to put in touch with us, um, Jazzy, or you know if you if you want. We can meet at your uh, at um office. Do you have an office in Myanmar? Uh no. Uh, Myanmar agents are, are looked after by the Vietnam team. Oh, okay. Yes, I see. Um, yeah. but yes, uh, Myanmar students do need a foundation. Okay. This one also about Myanmar. Uh. Myanmar students need to attend the foundation program who pass matriculation exam if they join UG program. I'm not quite sure about the matriculation exam. Um, yes, they do. They do. But when I send through a, the email to you, I'll put all of the different entry requirements on it, Jazzy, and you can share it with um, all the yeah. 
the people who are dialed in today. Yeah, okay. Okay, next question is, uh, this one is related to, uh, you know, like some countries uh, have like policies change it and then uh, some of the students got visa rejection from the Australia. This one is uh, really popular <laughs> nowadays. And are you able to accept application for students that previously had a visa rejection? What, uh, what are they asking? Um, for the students uh, who previously got the visa rejection, are you available to accept them? Uh, do you mean that they've had a rejection from Australia? Yeah, most of them are from Australia or some of them are from US okay. and Canada. Um, I mean, the, the Canadian and the Australian rules are very different to ours. I, I think we, we accept more students than they do in Canada and Australia. So what I, I, I don't think it, would, it wouldn't go against you, but let me double check that. Um, but it's a really good question. Uh, I'm just writing this down so I can put it in the email that I send you after. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, I'll put the, I'll put that in the the answer to that because we have a visa expert working in our team, um. So I would go and I'll speak to her and then um put it in the email so you can get the answers on that. Thank you. Is LU engineering degree under Washington Accord? Is what sorry? A uh, Limerick University engineering degree under Washington Accord. Washington? I don't know. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll follow up with you regarding this question. I think this one is come from um, Malaysia. So I'll double check with you later. Okay. And then about the intake. Uh, this agent probably uh, missed out the slide about the intake. May I know the intake for all programs? Uh, you mentioned previously, uh, most of them are in September and only two in January. We have two in January, but they're not they're not very popular. One is sports as uh, health and sports program. Um, and the other one is um, a master's. Again, I think it could be sports, but they're not they're not popular programs. Again, I'll put those two um, programs into the email that I sent you, Jazzy. OK, thank you. OK. Any more questions uh, from the agent partners here? Because all answered has have been, uh, yeah, the questions have been answered. Uh, if you have more questions, feel free to drop in the Q&A box. And anything that you didn't receive an answer on, uh, straight after the call, I'll, um, I'll send an email through to Jazzy and she'll be able to share that with all of you. So you'll be... You know, yeah. you can all see the answers to the to the questions that have been asked. But some there were some really good questions that um that I'll go away and find the answers to for you. Okay, this one is regarding the Washington Accord. Is recognition of engineering degrees from twenty odd countries for registration for professional or chartered engineer boards? So yeah, I need to find yeah. I I need to go and look that up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, we already answered all the questions. Okay. Do you have any more questions? Because we still have uh, some minutes.
That's a good sign. Yeah, I already answered all of them. <laughs> so, um, Jazzy, I'm I'm going to be visiting Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam. So, um, please put me. You know, feel free to put me in touch with, um, you know, your colleagues yeah, around sure. the around the region. Um, I'd love to pop in and and meet everybody and put faces to names. Yeah, are you going um, to Philippines? Uh, in your agenda i'm not going to philippines on this on this trip but i hope to go to the philippines in early 2025 again okay okay yeah, yeah. this one is for fun often will meet you in thailand uh she has the rm always based in bangkok oh it's one of your agents in bangkok uh yeah, we have agents in Bangkok and uh my colleague Pafan will meet you in Bangkok. Uh, we have office oh, in great. Bangkok. Oh, that's great because I'm I'm traveling over for the OCSC. Yeah. In October, so yeah, that would be great. I I'm more than happy to to come to your offices and and have a a chat. Okay, uh, we got last question here regarding the uh -huh. partial scholarship. Does it depend on the GPA only? Uh, I think we haven't covered about the scholarship here. Is there any opportunity to get the scholarship and how much uh, maximum the students can get? Person. Yes. So we have a we have a partial merit merit based scholarship. However, um. Student, international students, if they need a foundation, it should be a foundation from UL uh, before they can um, be eligible for the scholarship. And then what we would ask for is 5% above the entry requirements. Okay. Uh, so the first one is the progression when they uh, finish the foundation and continue to the bachelor. And then five, uh, starting from five percent, from the one year tuition fee. Is it correct? Correct. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, no. I'm sorry. The... No, five five percent above entry requirements is what we ask for. That that's the uh, requirement, and the scholarship is two thousand euro per year, or if it's a business program, it's two thousand five hundred per year. Okay, is it uh the maximum amount, two thousand? Yes, it is five hundred. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same for how same about, for everything. Yeah, how about when the students uh combine it with the like company scholarship? Is it, is it possible to do that? Because uh some some of the uh, companies in Indonesia uh currently sponsoring the managers. Uh, to study uh, for their master or PhD uh, and one of the requirements is for them to get the partial scholarship. Is it uh, possible to combine the company funding and with the partial scholarship from Limerick? Um, well, the scholarship does not apply to PhD programs. Okay, it's, it's for... The partial merit. Uh, it's only for... Uh, yes, it's only for undergrad and uh, masters. Yeah. Um, and let's say students were coming in through the DICTI program. Um, yeah. They would not be able to combine that. Uh, you know, but they, they only come for semesters. But if they're coming in on the PhD, they can't combine because there's no merit base. But if they were coming up in... Um, undergrad or masters they can apply for the merit based okay okay noted uh i think that's all arising uh thank you for your time and presentation uh, and you're looking very forward welcome. to get the yeah the summary for the programs and the intro requirements yeah I'll, yes. I'll contact you when uh, i have the inquiries for the agent partners uh again the cases great great and uh, thank you all for thank you. thank you all for giving me your time. Thank you, thank you, Raisin. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest yeah, of your day. day for bye, you. bye. Yeah, have a good day. Bye. Bye.